You ever tried to make yourself not think that way? I, I mean, I, I'm being honest with you. That, that's not what he's... So, when I tell you, with the humble is wisdom, with the humble, you're well advised. Okay, but how do you get to be humble? And God tells us how to get to be humble. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, he said, verse number 8, well, let me just say this. Verse number 7, Wherefore, whereof I was made a minister, according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of His power, <laughs> unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this great grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Embrace God's grace. Realize that you're the least, you're worse than you even think you are. You're not even worth having the tool to give them the tool. They could have got the tool without you. They didn't need you there. They could have won the game without you. Or they could have lost it without you. As I saw one team, they lost 99% of their games, and guess what? They could have lost 99% of their games without you. Even if you are a superstar player on a team. They could accomplish just as much without you. It may have been a little bit more difficult. They may have had to go look for the two. Are you seeing they could have accomplished it without you? Your embrace the fact that the reason you get to do any of it is because God writes. Embrace God or your place. Embrace your place of God's grace. Paul said, and I believe you wrote Hebrews. Paul said, I'm a Hebrew of the Hebrews. Travel to Benjamin. I mean, I, according to law, I'm blameless. I'm pro he could have said, I am probably the most best understanding of the Jewish law. I mean, I was a Pharisee of the strictest tribe or the strictest sect of the Jews. A Pharisee. I mean, I was somebody. I was up there and God saved me and told me, get out of here. You're not even allowed to go to the Jews. Now, how's that going to be? The rest of them, fishermen, tax collectors. Nobody. I'm a Pharisee. I'm educated. Realize, he tells us, I'm the least of all saints. 1 Corinthians, he tells us. Let's look over there. 1 Corinthians 15. Verse number 10. But the grace of God, I am what I am. So we find it's the least of all saints. According to Ephesians chapter 3. Then he says... I am what I am, and His grace was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labor more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Don't just embrace your place because of God's grace. But can I say, run your race by God's grace. Amen. Every whatever God has for you, do with all your might. Put everything you got into it. He said, I labored more abundantly than they all because he embraced who he is in Christ and that he was the least of all saints. He didn't deserve this man is the most educated of every one of them. The most talented probably preacher of all of them. 
But here's Peter, just a fisherman who stumbled over himself and yet he's got his messages recorded in the Bible. Paul has none of his messages recorded in the Bible. Now he's got his letters recorded in the Bible. Because his letters were to the churches and the Gentile churches. And he was a the apostle to the Gentiles. And he, only, and he didn't even get to put his name on Hebrews. Why didn't he put his name on Hebrews? Because he was not to the Jews. He was to the Gentile. So the Gentile letters, Paul gets to put his name on. You say, why? Because I'm, I embraced his place by grudge. And he ran his race. He said, I labored more abundantly than they are. He said, I'm putting everything I've got in this thing. I'm just going to do what God asked me to do. I'm just going to enjoy Him in the midst of every bit of it. When I'm getting beaten, when I'm going through the hard times, I am going to enjoy Him. His focus was on letting the grace of God do it. His focus was on looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of His faith. His focus was on getting my eyes off of me and on to Jesus. See, everything you are, is given you by Christ. Everything you have is given you by Christ. Even the little bit you can do. I shouldn't have even been able to have been invited or allowed to go over to Pastor Nichols' house last week when they were fixing that fan. But God, I just want to get in the way. All I was going to do. All I was going to do is get in the way. I knew that. Brother Hall said, I said, we're, we're, we're looking at my car, looking at some things. Put, or no, we're putting a desk up on, a, the, the, on, the, 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 on his trailer. I said, and I said, he said, well, I'm going to take that to Brother Nichols. I said, we well, need some help taking off. He said, you can come. Yeah, come on. And uh, I went. And I'm not much help because I'm not, I'm not a sneaky. All right, y'all all think that the reason I wear loose shirts is because I don't want everybody to see my muscles. I want, I don't really don't want anybody to see it. I don't have, <laughs> but that's beside the point. Everybody knows that. <laughs> but I'm, don't, don't do that, Johnny. I can still do more push-ups than you can. Oh. And I don't have to push up as far. Or you don't have to push up as far. That's all right. But that's the difference. What I'm trying to tell you is, uh, uh, what I'm trying to get you to understand is, hey, that God allows us to do anything. To have the friends we have. That He allowed us to come to Him and be part of the family of God. That He allows us to do anything. Because without Him, I can do nothing. I have to go to him to get anything to give to anybody else. I have to go knock on his door. I don't have anything for them. How am I going to feed the flock of God? There's nothing in me that wants to feed them anything. I don't have nothing. I'm empty. And God says, Hey, the rest of them are sleeping. He doesn't say don't bother him. He says, that's what our friends would say. Don't bother me. It's midnight. What? I'm sleeping in bed. He doesn't do that. He just gets up and says, I'll give you something. You just knock at midnight asking him to give you something and he will give you what you need. Hallelujah. I'm going to do my Chris Stewart and John Nick. Hey, man! <laughs> all right, I don't do it as good as they do. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Uh, Amen. I, it's not me. I have I, I, so I have nothing outside of him. I have nothing without him. And truthfully, 
I am what I am by the grace of God. I, can, I, I, I am nothing. I can do nothing and I have nothing. But all that he gives me, he'll give me everything I need to accomplish all he wants me to accomplish. I preached some years ago in the book of 1 Samuel. I believe it's in 17, 16, 17 or 18. Jonathan takes off his bow and gives it to David. Takes his sword off and gives it to David. Takes his girdle off, which that has his, it's like his holster and stuff that holds his daggers and everything else. All that he has, and he gives it all to David. Because David just can't. His mind. He gives up all of his ability. He says, I'm nothing now. You're the king. Do with me what you want. A few chapters later, I read Jonathan fighting a battle. He's got a bow. He's got a sword. He's got a girdle. What well, doesn't say he's got a girdle, but I'm assuming he has a girdle that's holding his stuff on. He's got all these things to fight the battle. Why is that? Because our king will make sure we have everything we need to fight the battles that we have to fight to do what he wants us to do. But we, through pride, lose sight of him. And we go from grace to disgrace. Go from favor to disfavor. It's our own fault. Why? Because we started out this thing by grace just looking unto Jesus. Saying, boy, I didn't deserve any of the history. It wasn't your baptism, was it, John? It was all salvation, all by the grace of God. By the blood of Jesus Christ. It wasn't what I've done, it's what He did. And the fact that He allowed me in. That's how we started. But so often, we start thinking, I've got to do. The truth is, it's all there is to it. It's all Him. Anything He wants you to do. You'll do. You can do. Just think you'll do. Now the truth of the matter is, that's just the way I got to ponder these things. And uh, I find my own self struggling with this stuff. Off and on. Off and on. And if you never struggle with pride, praise God. I want you to pray for us that had not attained. With all of us, I think, sometimes struggle with these things. I, somebody asked me, do you struggle with it as much as you did when you were young? And I say in different areas. Same thing, different areas. You still struggle. And only by pride comes change, comes contention, comes confusion. If you find yourself ever found yourself where you feel like you're in bondage, check about pride. If you ever find yourself feeling contention inside of you, check about pride. If you ever find yourself feeling confused, check about your pride. And then look at the fact that he's allowed us to have everything we have. And then, you know, the end of the result, and we got heaven to We get to spend eternity with Christ. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you.